I'm ever about to drive what was voted Britain's worst, second worst roundabout. It is, without a doubt though, Britain's most insane roundabout. This has no sound. This is the plough roundabout in Hemel Hempstead. It's completely crazy. It's Britain's craziest, nuttiest roundabout. The people here are crazy too. In 2005, this roundabout was voted the UK's second worst roundabout. Think about it, this roundabout is so bad, it doesn't even have the distinction of being Britain's worst roundabout. Here we go. Oh, good God, this looks terrifying. Oh God, here we go. It looks bad. One, two, three, four, five, six mini roundabouts surrounding one large central roundabout. This roundabout was built in 1973. It's not even the first magic roundabout in the UK. The first magic roundabout was built in Swindon in 1972. That means they built this one afterwards, knowing full well what they were going to get. It's nuts. The one in Swindon is actually called the Magic Roundabout. That's a brilliant name. This is called the Plough Roundabout. That's a rubbish name. Even the name is second best. So the local council took a good long look at that crazy roundabout in Swindon and went, oh yes, that's mad enough. Let's have one of those in Hemel. Brilliant, because the number one thing the people of Hertfordshire need is the second worst roundabout in Britain. That'll put us on the map. After Swindon, obviously, the magic roundabout is basically nuts. It's a two lane roundabout. One big roundabout surrounded by five small mini roundabouts. It looks scary. Well, it is scary. It looks like mayhem. It looks like an insurance nightmare. It's a bit weird. There are two rows of traffic going in opposite directions to each other. This is going to be a little bit scary. I'm genuinely a little bit scared. There have been three sides now, they're all mad. I don't quite know where I'm going or what I'm doing. So why does this exist? It's actually the story of a proper British success. In 1933, the government established the Road Research Laboratory. Britain's traffic difficulties are receiving close attention. It's obvious which Mini was well shot. And an E-Type with faulty brakes is certainly asking for trouble. Lamp standards also can mean death for motorists. But not this one. It's of a lightweight construction with a breakaway joint near the base, which snaps clean away on impact, as demonstrated. Scientists, engineers and other specialists came together to improve roads to make them safer and more efficient. It still exists. They export British road transport know-how all over the world. But not this, not the Ragic Roundabout. This was not an export success. I've genuinely never done this before. This is my first time and I'm genuinely a little bit nervous. There is a sense of trepidation about this. This is quite worrying. Here it comes. That's the side, the iconic side for Britain's craziest, maddest, Roundabout. The world's very first roundabout was built in Letchworth Garden City in 1909. This is a roundabout! Two World Wars and one World Cup later in 1970, a guy called Frank Blackmore down at the Road Research Lab invented the mini roundabout. It was genius. <laughs> Mini roundabouts keep traffic moving way better than T-junctions and they're safer too. Roundabouts are cheap. A traffic light costs about 60 grand a year to maintain and they're not very green. All that starting and stopping uses way more fuel. Britain and the Road Research Lab exported the idea of roundabouts and mini roundabouts across the world, saving time and money and countless lives. But not in America. Americans don't do 
roundabouts. It wasn't until 1988 that the Americans tried to build their very first roundabout at the intersection of the California 33 and the California 150. There was an outcry, a petition, a whole palaver. It was a big thing. It was never built. They do have some now, but not many. Americans don't like roundabouts. They do T-junctions and traffic lights. We're talking about roundabouts. Yeah, we're talking about roundabouts. Just one problem. It's a little foreign to many Americans. Uh, I do see some confusion. And there is a lot of confusion about how they work. Because people are confused by it. So confusing. It is somewhat confusing. Uh... I think it's very confusing. Are roundabouts creating more harm than good? And more harm than good. Drivers struggling to safely maneuver this new roundabout. I was in the circle and he hit me. We're coming this way and he's yelling at me. I'm like, I don't have a yield. You have a yield. Here's a motorist driving across the center of the roundabout instead of using the lane. Here is a driver signaling to go left but actually goes right. The red minivan is going the wrong way. Most roundabouts in America have been built within the last 10 years. People are going to have to be use their head. Let us know what you think about these traffic circles. And he plans to hold up his signs for as long as it takes. But it's a miserable failure. It's a totally, totally useless thing. And I think it's what you would call in Britain a bobbin's idea. I hate the roundabout. Lord only knows what the Americans would think of this monstrosity. But as a result, America has more side impact collisions than we do in Europe. They call it T-boning. The sides of your car are not very well protected. Sadly, T-bone accidents are way more serious than head-on collisions. Department of Transportation, when you replace a crossroads with a roundabout, the number of deaths falls by 90%. That's massive. Injuries fall by a huge 76% and crashes themselves are reduced by 35%. If you're a massive nerd, you can go and look at the research. The rest of us are moving on. Do you know, um, this is very, very pretty. There's a river that runs through the roundabout. It's got trees on either side. It's very nice indeed. Shame about all the bloody cars though. That kind of ruins it. So in front of me is the roundabout voted the second worst roundabout in Britain. Not the first, the second worst roundabout in Britain. And we're gonna to attempt to go around it now. Uh, the Britain even has a list of its favorite roundabouts. It's just one of the many many peculiar things about living here on this strange little island filled with nerds. A nerd is anyone who is overly enthusiastic and knowledgeable about a very, very niche topic. Frank Blackmore, the inventor of the magic roundabout and the mini roundabout, is probably one of Britain's greatest ever nerds. And now that I've made a video about his roundabout, I'm a nerd too. All right, what we're going to do now is clearly very dangerous and stupid. I'm going to attempt to get to the middle of the roundabout. Wish me luck. Okay, this is nuts. So you're not really, you're not really meant to do this. You're definitely not meant to try and cross this roundabout. Uh, I don't think this is very sensible. Okay, we're going to try and get to the middle. If I sound scared, it's because I am. Thank you very much. Nice man, let me through. We did it, we did it, we did it. We're in the middle of the roundabout. Look, look how pretty it is. So Frank Blackmore, yes, that's a picture of him in the middle of the road, setting up the world's first mini roundabout. He's wearing a white lab coat because of course he is. Frank has worked out that if one roundabout is quicker than one T-junction, what about two roundabouts? So he built one. I mean, he built two in Truro, Cornwall, and it worked really well. So he thought, what about three mini roundabouts? 
that worked. Do you see where this is going? Do you see where this is going to end up? I've never done this before, and it's a little bit scary. Then in 1972, Frank had his idea. One mini roundabout surrounded by four mini roundabouts, and he tried it out, the Ring Junction at Colchester. It was a complete and utter total disaster. Cars really crashed, twisted metal, utter mayhem. Men in white coats experimenting with live traffic. It's not a laboratory, it's a road. They designed a death trap. It's not health and safety gone mad, it's health and safety gone. Just gone. It's very pretty, but it's very windy and I've got to get back across to get home. Anyway, they gave up on that design, but Frank Blackmore pressed on until he built the Death Star of Magic Roundabouts in Swindon. This monstrosity was built here in Hevel Hempstead only a year later. So let's give it a go. So I'm about to do it. I'm about to drive what was voted Britain's second worst roundabout. And without a shadow of a doubt, this is Britain's scariest, most insane roundabout. This is a little bit nuts. I've been writing and researching and thinking about this video for a few weeks. So I've now built this up to such a point that I'm genuinely quite scared. Here we go. Okay, so it's a dual carriage roundabout. There are two lanes of traffic. I'm going left, and well, I'm just going to give way. You always give way to the right. There's a car coming. There's another car coming. <laughs> okay, okay, let's squeeze in here. So, uh, right. So we went through the first junction. There's a madman to the right of me. Now I'm going to go round the next mini roundabout. Uh, I'm signaling left, right. I'm in the wrong lane. Am I in the wrong lane? I'm in the right lane. So I think we can go. Can we go? I don't know. It's a bit weird. Yeah, we can go. We're fine. Back chat's giving me. Is there any other way? Should we come off? So to come off, we just turn left. That's it. Oh, do you know what? Now, and you know what? It looks a bit mad. It looks a bit intimidating. But in reality, yeah, we deal with it quite easy. It's strange, it's odd, but actually it's entirely doable. No problems, no problems at all. Didn't crash, didn't die, didn't explode. <laughs> I know it's only a roundabout, but it is gorgeous. Do you know what the official title of the president of the UK Roundabout Appreciation Society is? He's called the Lord of the Rings. He's a nerd, obviously, but we need nerds. Without nerds, we wouldn't have cars or internal combustion engines. Without nerds, we probably wouldn't have wheels. And without Frank, without Frank Blackmore, we wouldn't have this. We don't need this. This is just dumb. Subscribe. Actually, to be fair, I was talking to a bus driver about five minutes ago. What the bus driver said is that before this roundabout was here, traffic was backed up down all five, six roads. Since the roundabout came in place, the traffic moves. It moves freely. It moves well. And yes, there are occasional accidents when people come here and don't know how to use the roundabout and get confused. But you know, that's life. Thanks, Frank. Don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye. Subscribe! I think I'm going the wrong way, actually. This isn't the way home.